Alrighty, y'all. Let's do this. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. My name's Lou. I'm an avid tournament angler, bass fisherman, kayak angler, somebody who wishes he could be fishing all day, every day, if possible. So if that reminds you of yourself, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Also, head over to Instagram and give me a follow at beyondthebounds underscore outdoors. And if you like this video and this video topic, go ahead and smash that thumbs up. And this is all part of a playlist. So, you know, you can go and find other co-angler topic videos in this playlist. Let's get to it and talk about one of the worst mistakes a co-angler can make. All right, guys. So, you know, I did two years of co-angling before I stepped up to the front of the boat. And let me tell you, you know, like I learned a lot and there were some definite struggles uh, throughout just being a co-angler. You don't have control of the boat. You don't have a say in what goes on. Um, sometimes a boater is going to unposition the boat fairly. And, you know, that's what I want to talk to you about today is about the biggest mistake that I think any co-angler can make is not focusing on the mental portion of this, right? You can have all the right tackle. You can have nothing but loose rod reels, you know, everything perfect, great line, just, you know, sun line, whatever you want to talk about. Like you could, you could have all of that perfect and then be put in a situation to where you're just not catching fish. You're not around fish. You can't catch a fish behind a guy. Like I have a, I actually had that happen to where, you know, I was watching, I've watched several boaters do extremely well and then be like, why am I not catching fish behind these guys? One of those I really like to talk about is an event that I had up on the upper bay up here in Maryland, the upper Chesapeake Bay to where, you know, the boater, man, he like very fairly, very fairly. Most of my boaters always position the boat fairly. There might be once or twice throughout the day to where they gave themselves preference, but almost 95% of the time, you know, I had like one time I got back boated, but pretty much all of them really positioned the boat fairly. And this guy did the same thing too. Going down a bank, has tons of laydowns there. It's an early spring pattern. I mean, they're all wood for sure. I mean, he's plucking fish off with crankbaits and, uh, you know, small Texas rigs. That's actually where I started throwing a, a, a Zoom crawl. You know, I picked that up from him. And let me tell you, I put that thing to work up on Champlain during the BFL. Uh, anyway, back to the point, right? Uh, the point is, is that, you know, he positioned the boat fairly. And I just didn't catch fish behind him, guys. And trust me, man, when that starts to happen, you are going to get angry. You're going to get disgruntled on the back of the boat. So I want you to really like commit to an event. When you go into that event, I want you to commit to the mentality of don't back up, don't back down. Because, you know, that's that's what's going to keep you in it. That's what's going to keep you fishing till that last second. I mean, it is not over till you take that little buoy and you toss it back into that check-in boat. I've had several events and I want to talk about that real fast to where um, the event, right? So you see a little tro trophies on this side. You see a little trophy back there. That's a fifth place finish, right? Um, very proud of that trophy. Very proud of that trophy. But let me tell you guys that that trophy just didn't happen on its own. Day one, right? Day one, Fished hard all day long, and it took all day long to catch five fish. There he is. God, be good, be good, be good enough. Ooh. Sorry, I'm doing a bad job of handling him. Woo! Dang. Put me in some grass and I can get I can get to work, man. <laughs> Sweet. Woo! God, you are light. You should be at least another pound. <laughs> oh wow. That's the limit, guys. Woo! And that's another thing. Like these boaters and these people, they're not always on a lot of fish. So they have to travel to a bunch of places. They have to pick up, you know, one fish here, one fish there kind of thing. It's never like, oh, I just went to that. Well, I can't say it's never. Seldom is it always a, uh, I just went to that one spot and bam, had 20 pounds in the, in the bag super fast. That absolutely happens, but it doesn't happen all the time. And for everybody, um, 
And unless you get a good draw, and I, man, tell me, I had some phenomenal draws. All of my boaters, all of them, even the guy who back boated me, all of them were great people and great, great anglers. You know, back to that, it's on this side, it's on this side. <laughs> but seriously, back to this, you know, it wasn't until we were, it wasn't until we were so close to pulling up the trolling motor, I mean, maybe 10 minutes more on the clock that I caught the fifth fish. And in a multi-day event, it's going to be very important that you stay in it because you might only catch 10 pounds day one, right? You're 10 pounds, and then the guy, the top co-angler at the front, man, he's only got, he's got 20 pounds, right? Well, that's going to switch, guys. They're going to repair those people up, right, and with different people. And, you know, that day one guy, he might not have such a good day two guy, or he just might not catch them on the next day. And then you catch, you come in with another 13 pound bag and like auto, automatically, all of a sudden, you're in the mix. Keeper number three is a good one. Keeper number four, if they keep growing, they're growing, they're growing. And you've made it to day three, you know? So luckily for me, on, on that event in particular, I pulled a great boater and he was like, man, I don't know, I'm kind of worried about running down. Uh, it's going to be a rough ride. I was like, man, you do what you got to do. I'm, I'm up for anything. Let's go do it. And he did. And he got down into an area. He power pulled down. He had stuff right in front of him that he was picking apart and fishing. And I couldn't make cast to it. So I was just looking around. I was like, all right, you know, I did see some shad flicker over there. Bam. You know, I ended up catching 17 pounds behind it. And I did that by just staying in it mentally, keeping a positive attitude, thinking like, man, this is going to keep going well. I'm just going to stay in it. I'm just going to fish as hard as I can because that's the one thing I can control. That is truly the one thing you can control is your mental game. And, you know, so the worst mistake a co-angler can make is just getting down on yourself, not keeping that don't back up, don't back down attitude of saying, I'm going to keep going no matter what this day throws at me. You know, and then we come to the last day of that event, right? And let me tell you, that last day of the event threw me for a big curve uh, because, yep, you know what the guy the guy backboated me people hate that i say that but truth is the truth right he kept me off of fish even at the end of the day he was pulling into a mat pulling out of the mat pulling back into that mat and you know the sun was super high the fish were gathered in that mat and eventually you know i did say something to where i was like hey you mind turning the boat so that i could actually fish this mat too and he did that and then i started catching fish and i was able to catch fish but it wasn't until the last hour of the day uh, that I was able to catch fish and luckily um, he was a good angler he, he put me on he put us both on fish at, at, at the end of the day there and uh, you know I was able to salvage four fish out of there with one really big one and you know managed to hold on to only dropped one place into into fifth place I was down at fourth and you know came home with a nice three thousand dollar check but there are several other events Okeechobee didn't catch a thing you know day one Okeechobee day two caught like two fish. My boater barely, he barely caught any. It was just an extremely hard event that time. You know, I've been to other events to where it's only been like one, one fish here, one fish there. My very first event as a co-angler, we're running down the Potomac. My boater flings a prop. The day's pretty much gone, right? There's nothing you can do about that. You have to take these things as they come, adapt and overcome. Don't back up, don't back down. So guys, if you're going to be a co-angler this year, start in 2021. It's a lot of fun. Just keep the mental game in check. Go into it with the aspirations that you're going to have fun, that you're going to learn, and that you're just going to try your best and fish as hard as you can and leave it all out there on the water. Because I guarantee if you do that, you're going to have a great time. You're going to learn stuff and you're going to better prepare yourself and become a better angler uh, through fishing under pressure. So guys, I hope you like this video. Go ahead and smash that subscribe, smash that thumbs up. As always, don't back up, don't back down. We'll see you around.